here is the shell blank looks just fine it is uh, now some of you may be wondering especially if you watch my YouTube channel apart from checking out this particular series this is really really beefy uh, way thicker than I would normally have for a drum shell. There are some drum makers who do this style who like extra thick shells and so they would probably be in heaven with this. I'm not one of those guys. I like the drum shells to be thin. I left the shell thick, extra thick on this first build, this first experimental shell, because I don't know how strong this wood is. You can see too that there are some real gaps in the joining, in the joinery uh, of the, of the individual sections that went into putting the door together. I will likely have to reinforce that, but I don't know. There are a lot of unknowns, so I want to start thick to see what I need to do so I can get a feel for what this wood is like, and uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, for now, here's the next step. Drums have air vents to let the air go in and out of the shell, and for that, I'm going to use this, old, this, uh, this piece of mulberry which is a beautiful yellow and has some wonderful ray fleck, or beautiful grain through here. And uh, we're going to do that right now. Now because I don't want this to get torn up when I'm uh, shaping the shell or to get glue stuck inside, I'm going to cut off a section of this dowel and plug the hole and I can drive this out later on. I won't glue it in and it will come out really easily afterward. Okay, and I think that some of you might be new to the channel or haven't watched someone build a drum before. Um, I think most people here are either into drum building themselves or want to be into drum building. So anyway, for anybody who hasn't watched me from the beginning or not since the last time I explained this, a couple of things. First, no tools that I'm using are specialized tools, except this jig to the extent I made it myself. Um, the router that I'm using, that blade right there, which runs off of that thing, is just a $70 Ryobi uh, quarter inch shank router um, that I got off of Amazon. Drill press is not necessary, though I got this from free from a friend of mine. Uh, the table saw is a, oh, it, it, it's Hercules but I just got it from Harbor Freight and it works great. It does exactly what I need to do. The one tool that I don't have right now because it died on me recently is a shop vac. Maybe you can tell. <laughs> anyway, the concept here is that the drum shell turns over top of the blade and it makes it round as you will see.
Okay, two passes done. Uh, it's almost the right, uh, right thickness, the right diameter. Uh, you can see even more clearly now all the problems with the wood, the way it was originally joined together. So what I'm going to do, uh, I've got some clear epoxy I'm going to mix up. I'm going to basically putty knife it into those, into those voids. I, I, kind of, I was thinking about mixing the mixing the epoxy with sawdust so that I can make those disappear more. But you know what? That's an artifact of the doors. Why not preserve it? Okay, this is the rig for shaping the inside of the drum. It's really, I mean, it's simpler than it looks. Um, four wheels, the shell rides on the four wheels, turns, then those risers and the sled allows the router to pass through. Here's the blade. I can make pretty aggressive cuts, I think, with this because the wood is relatively soft. So here's the, the start of it, completely round on the inside now, and if I wasn't interested in having a relatively thin drum, we could leave it like that, cut the bearing edges and call it good. I want to get down, however, so that the vent insert is at least flush at the inside. Um, I need to check the width there. What's up, John? Um, can, can Gordon come in for just a second? Nope. Okay. Yeah, so we're at an inch right now. I, with most drums, I take this, this main thickness to a half inch and I leave a lip at the top and bottom uh, as extra reinforcement and then take the rest down to a quarter of an inch. But I think for now we're going to go to three quarters and three eighths. We'll start with that and see how it goes. Okay, I think that's going to wrap up today's video. Let me show you where we're at and what we still need to do. Okay, got the inside shaped. Uh, everything's the right thickness. We are three quarters thick at that full depth. 
and uh, three eighths thick at the narrower. Um, these are old. No, get the right angle. These are old dowel joints from the old drum, or for the, the old drum, the old doors. I think I'm going to leave them. I'm not going to fill them. Um, I do want to go in and patch in some, patch up some of those these gaps. I'll use uh, super glue for that, a thin super glue or CA glue. Um, on the outside, these are not perfectly filled in, and I'll use uh, CA glue for that as well. And then finish sanding. Uh, there was one spot. Let's see. Yeah, all that, all that will be taken care of with CA glue. That's not a problem. Uh, this bigger one, oh, where to go? Yeah, got covered with sawdust. That I'm going to patch with epoxy because that is on the bearing edge, and I don't want that interfering with the playability of the drum. So I'll take care of some of that patching up tonight. And then the next video will be adding the finish and maybe, depending on if I can get my hands on some hardware, maybe even uh, putting it together and playing it. We'll see.